Despite all your preventative measures, you may end up in the cold water and you may need to wait for a while for rescue. So how can you survive? Well, there's several factors that will depend on how long you can survive. The first one is, are you wearing a life jacket or not? That's pretty obvious to most of us. To a lot of the general public, it's not. But obviously, especially in cold water, if you have a life jacket on, you can survive, even if you become incapacitated, because your airway will be protected. Behavior is very important. The more active you are, the more heat loss you have. And this will, will become relevant when you're trying to decide, should I swim to shore or not? Normally you wouldn't because of that increased heat loss. And we'll talk about whether you should later on. Also, the help position or the group huddle, things to decrease the heat loss. Remember on that, on that uh, balance, we want to decrease heat loss or increase heat production. And then the other things are just basically, what are you wearing? Are you wearing thermal protection? Clothing that we have on now will provide some thermal protection, not much, but better than having a bathing suit on. Uh, a PFD, uh, various types of life jackets, just because they're up against your body, will provide some thermal protection. But if you know that you're going to be doing some activities with a high likelihood of being in cold water, like paddling in, in, the, in the late season or in really cold water, you might want to use other things like wetsuits or extended wear paddling dry suits, suits that you can wear for several hours and actually be active in. And then of course uh, there are survival and immersion suits that are uh, you know, more bulky, uh, more insulation and you really would only use them if you knew that immersion in cold water was imminent and you put it on before your boat completely capsized or if you were part of a rescue team and you put on a, a, a rescue suit. Uh, but you could only wear that if you were not being too active. So those kinds of factors. Can you stay afloat? Can you maintain your airway? What is your activity going to do about either minimizing or maximizing heat loss? And the more thermal protection you have, the better, because of course that's going to tip that scale to decreasing heat loss. Any questions about that or comments? Obviously, there are a lot of different areas that people paddle and consider to be cold water, you know, the northern United States, southern United States. At what temperature would you determine that you would need to wear the appropriate apparel, wetsuit, dry suit, or something like that? First, we define cold water as anything from 70 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. And that is a, a temperature at which most of us, if we were in the water long enough, would eventually become hypothermic, although it might take quite a while. Uh, really cold water would be 50 degrees or less, or 10 degrees Celsius. And uh, if I was doing any activity like paddling in water that cold, I would certainly want to have some kind of thermal protection on.